More than 14 years of experience in the areas of filming, directing, and editing short films, documentaries, and television productions, earning six Emmy Awards, four Addy Awards, and a Telly Award. Mike Edwards is the founder of the Five Stones Group, a film and documentary production company. He's also produced numerous educational documentaries, like the one we're going to be talking about today. And Melanie Miller is a former Miss Ohio 2006 and a Miss America contestant who's featured in the film along with so many courageous young women. Yellow Roses, Real Girls, Real Life, Real Hope. I want to tell you that my 19-year-old daughter watched this with me yesterday. We were very moved and so hopeful that women of all ages would get to see this collection of personal and profound interviews from teens and young women who unpack dark secrets in order to find freedom and healing. Welcome to you both. Thank, Thank you. you. Thanks for having us. I hope, as I said, that um, Yellow Roses is going to bloom everywhere. Um, uh, let's, let's start at the beginning. Uh, what brought you two together? Well, I, uh, we were doing the filming of the documentary, and we were up uh, at the Salvation Army, Northeast Ohio, on a camp, uh, filming teens, and, and Melanie walked in. And <laughs> she's obviously not a teenager, um, but uh, she, Melanie works with the Salvation Army, and she really, was able to Melanie? share some of her stories. Yes, I'm the Youth Ministries Director for the Ashland, for Ashland, Ohio, and it's been such a pleasure to um, work with young women and, and young boys as well that are just definitely struggling with some of these issues that this pressure to be enough in today's society and this pressure to fit in and um, it, it's just it's really such an honor to work with our young people. Those mm -hmm. are the terms that were framed mm -hmm. throughout to be enough, yes. to belong, to fit in, mm -hmm. uh, to be noticed, uh, to matter. Mm -hmm. uh, it just it breaks your heart. Uh, that this is, well, belonging is our first felt need. That's totally normal. Mm -hmm. But the tsunami of peer pressure yes. is wreaking havoc in young lives. Definitely. Speaking of young lives, can we backtrack just a little before we talk about the content here? Sure. Um, you're a grateful man to be sitting here today, Mike. Yeah, it's been a, an, an interesting journey. <laughs> um, my uh, my my past was we st we started the Five Stones Group, which is my company, and that was kind of birthed out of uh, a time in my life where things weren't uh, going all that great. Uh, my life was uh, completely a mess, <laughs> um, but uh, God kind of got a hold of me and kind of gave me a second chance. Um, Can I just add a little color commentary? Sure. Raised in a Christian home. Yeah. Attended Christian schools. Yep. I just want to encourage the parents who think they blew it, uh, who are struggling with wayward mm -hmm. good kids, yeah. Yeah. that you had all the right stuff happening for you. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I had all the training. I knew the right things to say. I was, you know, senior class president. I mean, I, I knew all the right things to say and the right things to do, but I, you know, I just wasn't uh, where I was supposed to be. And um, so I just got uh, to the point where um, I just, you know, needed some help and I got the help that I needed. Um, and that was at a point where two gentlemen came to me and said, you really need to start a company. And I'm like, no, 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 I'm not your guy. <laughs> you know, it's not my thing. And they're like, no, no, you really need to do this. And so we started with a project called Every Young Man's Battle, uh, which is a documentary film based upon the book of the same title. Produced that. Steve Arterburn's Yeah, book. Steve Arterburn, we, Fred Many Stoker. of us know it. Yeah, we worked with Steve. Steve was great. And, uh, and then, you know, for the last uh, 11 years, I've just been doing advertising and corporate media flying all around the world and about a year ago God kind of tapped me on the shoulder and said you know you really need to go back and do what you started out to do and I said again I said no 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 <laughs> you know I don't know how to do this um, and just by the grace of God and a phone call from mom yeah yeah <laughs> didn't mom help <laughs> yeah my mom it, my <laughs> mom's great come on let's give them credit yeah. they're the ones that never stop praying yeah um, yeah mom and dad are great and they were the ones who introduced me to Larry and Kathy Mead uh, who are the executive produ producers of the film, and, and without them, this project wouldn't be possible. So, From rehab to a redemptive tool, more than one. And I, I hope I'm not stealing any thunder, but you're being directed to the men, the young men. 
next that's going to be your yeah um, everybody who's seen the film has really said we we would love to see a project for the for the guys and so that's kind of our next thing in the works we wanted to get this one done first but since we have the every young man's battle background we wanted to expand those topics and do something for guys now melanie we're looking at an absolutely striking beautiful glowing christian oh, woman thank you um, surprising to read that you were bullied through yes. your school years. Yes. Uh, this is part of what sensitizes you to the, the pain mm -hmm. and the pressure mm -hmm. that the young girls are dealing with. Definitely. And Why bullied? Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Well, it was started really in the sixth grade for me. Um, sixth grade was, was when middle school started for um, our school system, and it just was really bad with um, girls would push me into lockers, girls would spit on me, and um, I would get prank phone calls in all hours of the night, and, and girls would be very detailed about how they were going to beat me up, how they wanted to kill me, and they would be very graphic. And even at lunchtime, and that's such a traumatic time, you, I mean, that's a time where you're socializing with your friends, and even my closest friends wouldn't even sit by me. So I spent my middle school years eating lunch in my art teacher's room <laughs> alone um, with my art teacher, and so it was a very traumatic time for me. And um, girls would just say terrible things about me, just just terrible words that are not appropriate to s really was mention. This a jealousy? Was it because you were beautiful and popular? And well, I'll tell you what. I was always a very very happy kid. Always smiled. Um, I was a cheerleader. I was in the orchestra. Very involved in everything. And mm -hmm. I danced since I was a little girl, and since I was three years old. So I was very involved in a lot of activities. But you I were a always hard act smiled. To follow, right? <laughs> I was always very happy, and I think a lot of people didn't like that I was happy all the time. Mm -hmm. And wanted to bring me down and I will I will admit for a while there I was very discouraged and my self-esteem was very low and I came home in tears every night after school because of the way I was treated and my mom um, I love my mom she's my biggest supporter my biggest cheerleader but um, it, she even says to me, I don't have my own children yet, but she said watching me go through that was more painful for her than for me. But she yeah. would just build me up every day saying, honey, you're so beautiful. You have so much to offer. Do not let those comments become your reality. And just those comments she would constantly say to me, I just decided, you know what, mom, you are right. I just got to keep my head held high and just let it go through one ear and out the other. I can't let that define who I am. And so I just continued to go through my high school years it was still really tough but um, I and a lot of people didn't believe in me even some some teachers didn't um, I had a dream to go to Miss America and even my classmates thought that was a ridiculous dream to have and people were just so negative about that but I did, there were some very influential adults in my life there was the superintendent of my school that believed in me he said okay if you make this happen I promise my wife and I will fly out to see you at Miss America so to me when people didn't believe in me it was a challenge to prove them wrong and to prove to them that yes I can do that and so um, through that experience I do believe that God was really just setting the tone for the work I do now because now the type of kids I work with at the Salvation Army are the same kids that bullied me in school and I'm starting to realize that it wasn't necessarily it was about me it was something that they were going through it's something personal that they're not getting that love they're not getting that attention from their parents there are so many other issues to why they really did bully and I, my, God is really starting to open my eyes now, being on the other side and after many years of finally healing from that, um, being able to address some of those issues with these young girls.